Hi, and we're here to tell you about one of the UK's top selling Malbecs. So my name is John Lightfoot and this is... John Murphy. And as I said, we're going to talk about, this is in our series of the top, um, I think about top 15 UK selling wines. And on this occasion, it's a Malbec. It's called Trivento. It's from Argentina. Uh, normally priced at £8 when at the time of filming it was available um, at uh, £6.50 from Asda. So uh, let's see what it is. We'll see what it looks like. £6.50, John. Um, I must admit, I mean, I'm enjoying these wines today, John. Yeah, so am I. Mm. So am I. Mine, it's been a, been a while since we've been able to do this. It given has, yeah. the, uh, as you can see, um, actually got a little bit of a brownie uh, tinge to it. Yeah, I don't know what I mean. It's a, it's a lot thicker, richer colour, isn't it? It is, Proper yeah. ruby, like you say, with a maybe that hint of brown just, just going it's along it, the... Um, yeah. yeah. Would, you, would you say that's typical for Malbec? Um, not re not really, no. No? No, I don't, I don't think it's a, a, not a natural thing, or I don't think it's um, that unusual, but I wouldn't say it's a typical thing. Okay, but it's a very nice colour anyway, and, and reasonably deep, nice and bright. Light is refracting and reflecting off of it very, very invitingly. It's definitely that, it's definitely inviting. So. Okay, shall we see what it smells like? I've, I've already done it, John, I'm sorry. Have you? We'll do it again, yeah. Okay, let's do it in unison. Mm. Doing what? Well, it's always best to do it together. <laughs> right, let's have a go on the nose. I'm thinking a uh, plummy. Not the accent. No, 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 plum. No, I'm thinking actual, actual fruit there. Plum, and black currant. I think I get more black currant than I do plummy. I can't quite make out the plummy. Although I guess that's the smoothness to the smell that I'm getting. Yes, again, it's all that kind of swap. It, it just really kind of gets you. It hits something in your brain, and that reminds you that's what it is. It might not be plum, but it's what I think plum yeah, it's what is. Yeah, what you you associate. Yeah, with that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. She also has that um, as you're just getting in there. The initial a little bit is because um, I know a lot of people describe wine as tasting or smelling like rubber, and I can understand you know, like tire rubber. Tire rubber. I'm, I'm glad you were. Yeah. <laughs> Before you get tire rubber, you can get. I must um, there's a pepperiness there as well. Which is um, for six fifty, this is not bad at all. Should we have gone the old taste buds, John? Okay, the tasting. The tasting. I liked how you said that. I liked. <laughs> First thing to say, it doesn't disappoint. Mm 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 mm. Mm. I say everything. Everything I got on the nose there almost comes through perfectly on the palate, and I see what you mean when you say it doesn't disappoint, and that does not disappoint at all for the price. What's the price, John? Uh, the price actually, I said earlier that it's six fifty. Actually, is available as we film from Asda six pounds. Uh, rather than its normal retail price of eight pounds. Six quid, six pounds. Mm. Oh, they're still going strong as well, the length on this. It Perfect. is, mm. yeah, it is. Wow, that again is another, well, well let's, uh, let's finish off what we taste before I get into, uh, mm. get ahead of myself. Mm. I think the length, it's got that sort of like slight sort of peppiness uh, after you've, you know, when it's just the aftertaste in your mouth, that's a sort of slight pepper, spicy mm. feel in your mouth. I know what you mean, and, and now it's becoming more, for me, jammy. Now I've tasted it, it's that kind of mm, mm, nice, yes, lick your lips kind of mm, mm. And all mm. for six pounds? That yeah, is... I'm in, I'm in. Okay. I'm sold. Yeah, that is that is a very nice wine. Well done. Not surprisingly, uh, not surprising, should I say, that it is one of the UK's top sellers. I, I, I can un, I can understand why. I can understand why. Oh yeah, definitely. It's very very easy to, especially at that at that price. You, you can bring this out, and I I would be thinking that would be a lot more expensive. I'd pay, I'd pay more money for that. And I'm I'm a Yorkshireman, <laughs> which says a lot. Mm. So in terms of, let's go on to the pairing. The pairing, well, I have been thinking about this uh, while well, I've been drinking that this time, stranger, and 
the thing, the cheese I put with this is going to be a cheddar, a cheddar, no, it is a cheddar called Old Winchester. No, I think it's a cheddar style called Old Winchester, um, which I discovered in a restaurant over in Huddersfield, um, way back, way before lockdown happened and all that. Um, and it's, it's, it's slightly strange because it's, it's, it's really tasty, but the texture is fairly waxy, but in a good way, with a little like salt crystals in there. So it's, the two together work very well. And I think that, because the, the old Winchester's got a nice bit of fire about it. So I think putting those two together would be beautiful. You, just, you think you bring the risk sometimes of when you find the perfect cheese and wine match, it's just overdoing it. Because uh, I know I do it frequently if, I've, if I'm just scoffing and drinking. I mean, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm not complaining. It's, it's fabulous, really. <laughs> but yeah, I think that will go together perfectly. But when you just obviously you're a cheese maestro. So when you get supermarkets, you get those gritty bits in, in, in cheddar. Is that what you're talking about? Basically, yes, but the old Winchester, I think, is about 12 months old, so a lot a lot of cheddars in the supermarket will be a lot younger, but it still has that grittiness, but the, the old Winchester, I would probably describe it as a, nearly a cross between one of the cheddars you would have in the supermarket and a parmesan. Oh, really? Sitting right there, yeah, similar kind of texture, so that waxiness about it, uh, with this, a lot more crunch in there. Wow. It's got a lot, just a lot, a lot more going for it, I think. So you wouldn't, I mean, because I know in, in your shop you have a, a, a mature cheddar, which I think you always explain it might not be the strongest, but it's the best cheddar. Which is that's it, yeah. The, the Cheddar Gorge, which is handmade and unpasteurised. It's the only cheddar that's actually still made in cheddar. <clears throat> and I will say it's my favourite cheddar as well. Um, although the, a Winchester will go with this, the Cheddar Gorge, it's, yeah, I think it's a beautiful bit of cheese. And it, if you've never had any, you should treat yourself to it. Um, I mean, I stock one that's about 12 to 14 months old, and I, that's as strong as you need to go, but everybody's different. I know a lot of people come to the shop and they say, you know, what's your strongest cheddar? And I said, do you want the strongest or do you want the nicest? Because in my opinion, there is a difference there. We can get a two year old um, cheddar gorge, but it's just, for me, it's about in your face and gets right under your gums and tickles, which, which is nice. But the 14 month old has this like traditional fashion style about it. And then as it warms up in your mouth, that bite comes and just, just surprises you. Hey, I'm here. And it's, it, it works very well for me. Uh, complex. Let's go. Lots going for it, and each cheese is different. Um, you know, they can they have tiny differences. So it's, yeah, it's, it's nice when a new cheese comes in and I get to taste and thing, because then sometimes sometimes they're okay, sometimes they're spectacular. And moving on to uh, yeah, you're very great connoisseur of cheese and um, it's a bit like wine cheese isn't it in terms of the ver ver variations you can get on oh, you yeah. know, one particular type of cheese. Mm. Um, I'm going to just go for something I'm, I, I think I'm going to sort of just think of the rather than sort of like um, Malbec is traditionally I think steak you would sort of uh, pair it with, with, with a steak meal. I'm just trying to think a little bit outside of that box and uh, what struck me with this is a steak and kidney pie. Do you think it would cope with that John? Do you think that I'm only saying I, I don't like kidney. Ah. Uh, I'm not well, a fan. Go for, what about then a steak and ale pie? Now you're talking, steak and ale. You know, I make a pretty mean steak and blue cheese pie. Oh, wow. I think that would go with that. Yeah? And there's a bit of mushroom in there as well. Oh, well, I'm allergic to mushrooms, so it definitely uh, wouldn't go for me. All right. I might make you one, John. Oh, thanks. Without the mushroom. <laughs> 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 but no, I can see that, I can see that. And again, when you start thinking about that and, and you know, marrying them in your mind, I mean, my mouth's watering now just thinking about this, this steak pie with a bottle of that. And I'm like, oh, I realise now I, I put on so much timber. But it, it's all right. It's, there's got to be some, some pleasures in life, haven't there? Well, yeah, but I mean, I think that, you know, as you know, living in Yorkshire, the great concern about putting on weight is that one has to then buy larger clothes, which, which you know, is expensive. So, um, yeah. I'll have to pull back a little bit. Just yeah, just, just a little. Just a tad. <laughs> so, okay, well, just let's mm. move on to uh, the score. What, what, would you, uh, what would you give this as a score? Um, well, I'm going to go straight out and say, and again, I'm factoring in that £6 price bracket, which I think is very important with this one. I think that quality of wine at that price deserves 85 Agreed. I'm there as well. Exactly mm. the same. So that's twice in... A couple mm. of episodes that we've actually agreed to spot on. 85, definitely, yeah. Mm. That is a very nice wine. It's good enough to drink and enjoy on its own and uh, you know, inexpensive enough to uh, just have it there uh, while you're chatting to friends and maybe not even concentrating on that much. Mm. Fantastic. So, conclusion, would you buy it again, John? Every day of the week. Every day of the week. That's, um, 
every day of the week. Huh. Well, I would definitely have some of that in stock, uh, as you just said there. A friend's popping in, and that would do, it's a very impressive wine. I mean, I wouldn't tell them it was six pounds, I'd tell them it was 12, 14, and tell them they were getting a treat. <laughs> Absolutely, they, they would know no different. Yeah. And I, I think the other thing is that, you know, I really do understand why this, why this particular wine is in the uh, top UK 10. It's, mm. it's a very good value for money, excellent quality. Super. Mm -hmm. Well, fantastic. We really enjoyed this wine. Guys, uh, there are other wines uh, that we've reviewed that are in the uh, UK top selling list, so uh, we'll do some links to those. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this wine. Give us a like if you have. Uh, this wine, I swear, I should have said this video. Give us a, give us a like if you have. Um, and we really look forward to seeing you in the next one where we'll be tasting some more, we hope, delicious wine. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Chin chin. Chin chin.